and we are back for another uh, <laughs> podcast week uh for reviewing Rooney Kenshin episode 17 uh, I want to start off this podcast with apologizing to Jock in, in live I am sorry I, he was apparently smarter than I gave him credit for oh, uh, is that true Listen, listen. I've seen the scenario ding too many dang times. People can so, back I mean, me up on this. People can back me up on this. this you started seen... out by like telling the audience that you thought I was dumb. I didn't. What? You're like he's smarter than I thought he was. I thought about Utara, not you. What the heck? You must have thought I was pretty dumb. That's all I'm saying. The clarification audience was talking about Utaro, the character, not Spirit himself. Take what he's saying with a grain of salt. Specifically, one grain of salt. Don't exactly. spill it. Pick it up with tweezers. Oh lord, that'd be horrible. Don't break it. I mean, picking with tweezers, they could actually smash it. Well, that's what I meant. You'd have to be super delicate to pick up a single grain of salt with tweezers. What, what is this, a Karate Kid moment? or Where you <laughs> grab the mosquito about killing it? That's a mosquito with chopsticks, Daniel son. I don't know why, but I feel like that's that's kind of racist. Just to, what? I, I don't know. It's just to me. It feels like kind of racist, <laughs> but I, I guess it's not as bad as like Jackie Chan Adventures. Um, I look back on that show and I'm saying, ooh, it did not age well. <clears throat> why is it racist? It just kind of to me is like a stereotyping Asians. Because at the, at the um, time, at the time, it's kind of like what you would think Asians would sound like or even look like in that show. Like, any anime would could do the exact same scene, and it would be like a perfectly acceptable scene. I don't know if they would do what they did in Jackie Chan Adventures because that was like an American cartoon with an actual like. I don't even know. Is Jackie? I think Jackie Chan was Chinese. That was is Chinese. Is Chinese? Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's funny, funny, funny story. Korea, right? Funny, funny story. I actually, um, it was only like maybe five to ten years ago that Herbalized Jackie Chan was like not Japanese. Yeah, he's I, Chinese. I initially thought I initially thought uh, Jackie Chan came from um, Japan. I uh, I was when I found that he wasn't. I was I was like, oh my god, I've been cons- I've been calling this guy Japanese my entire life. I, I had to recorrect a lot of that in the last five to ten years. I don't know why I thought he was Japanese, but I mean, I was a kid, and I didn't I didn't know there was like different like countries in the Eastern world. I said I didn't even know the Eastern world existed until I was watching anime, but that's a different story for a different time. Bruce Lee was Chinese too. Wasn't Jet Li as well? well Jet Li is Bruce Lee's son. What? Jet Li is Bruce Lee's son. That can't be true. I didn't, know, I didn't know Bruce Lee even had a kid. Brandon Lee. I'm sorry, Brandon Lee was his son. Is that the same as Jet Li? No, oh, Jet Li is a, a different character. No, Jet, Lee has, Jet Li has children, but they're not like Brandon Lee. It's like uh, Tommy Lee, Jane Lee, Jada Lee, C. Lee. Siley, I don't know how to pronounce the last Barely one. Go along. Yeah, Brandon Lee was his uh, was his son, not not Bruce. I'm sorry, not Jet. Well, he, Jet Lee is definitely Chinese, but apparently he's a Singaporean martial artist. I guess another. This is I'm probably doing nothing to help my to help myself right now, but um. I don't know what I thought Singapore was. I did not realize it was actually recently this year I learned that Singapore was like an Asian country. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, I'm not kidding. I uh, I legitimately did not know Singapore was over there. I uh, when I found out, I found out this year. I I, I ended up looking it up for some reason. I don't know why I looked it up. Um, I I didn't I I didn't know. I don't know what to tell you. I uh, um. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, I'm, just, I'm not doing myself any favor. No, you're not. I really did not know seeing. Cause I remember just looking at Singapore's like addresses. Cause I remember seeing one. I don't know why I saw one, but I was like, that is really weird. I never made the connection that like 
the format was probably asian of uh, asian of like uh or origin origin i wasn't aware um i didn't even know malaysia was over there in asia and, and i only and here was my here's my here's my here's my counter it's gonna make this even worse um i thought malaysia was like an african country and i only thought that because for the most part i thought so like dark-skinned people living in that country and i think i'm still right over that last bit i'm sorry if we lost any viewers because of those comments i apologize you're probably not hearing this right now but i'm sorry there's some really small countries out there Ah, uh, yeah there's a lot more out there than uh than i mm. i'm so upset with myself because like I didn't expect like the Asian continent to be that big because I know China is like a huge mass of it, but like, I mean, speaking of small, like I mean, look at Japan. Japan isn't even really like a, a giant mass. Japan's just a bunch of islands that they managed to like grow on. Surprisingly, they've been able to build a lot over there. I'm actually kind of surprised, uh, but yeah, Japan isn't really all that big. I mean, Monaco is three quarters of a mile long. What? Monaco, the country Monaco is three quarters of a mile long. Or three quarters square miles. A country in Europe? Monaco. Yeah, the, 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 the one that country, the biggest state uh, in, in Europe? Yeah. Western Europe. It's a sovereign city state. I noticed they speak French over there. Tuvalu is 10, 10 square miles and is a full full on separate country. It's a, it's a island country. There's another like Asian country I remember that I remember I'm remembering now and I can't remember, remember the name and I remember hearing it in Seinfeld. Apparently that like place is like changed names so many different towns over the years. Um can't think of it but it's like a it's almost like a third world country over there uh crap i've seen i've seen the country a couple of times especially during like uh netflix shows uh talking about drugs and where like we're in, in countries where it's like, like drug trafficking is like big i can't think of the name give me the hints again it's just, it's just an Asian country that I know it was mentioned in Seinfeld. It was just, it was during, I'm not sure you've seen Seinfeld or even watched or even remember it, but it was during the season where Elaine's boss was burnt out and then just completely left the country and then gave the uh, company over to her. Um, it's not Paraguay. Crap. It's that crap either. Uh, I can't think of the name. Uh... What country did Elaine Bennis's boss go to? Burma. It's Burma is what they mentioned? Yeah, uh, it was like, they called it Myanmar though. It was like, apparently it used to be called Myanmar. I think it's still Myanmar now, but it changed names over the course of a couple of years. It went back and forth between Burma and Myanmar. Yeah. I've been looking it up. I found a a Reddit thread that said, "Name a country besides the USA that's mentioned in Seinfeld, accompanied by quotes." And I just got to Burma, just as you were saying it. Or Myanmar, Burma, or is it Myanmar? I don't know what it's called today, but I know it switched names over the course of a couple years. Oh, that's what they said in Seinfeld. Burma, or is it Myanmar? Yeah, they mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, that. But yeah, just like yeah, just I guess I want to say like yeah, just just. The world's big. There's so many small countries. And we still got that we still got that one like civilization out there in the middle of the middle of the water that if you get near it, you you probably will die. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Say it again. I the civilization been. that's out there in the middle of the water that if you even get near it, you will die. The people don't like outsiders. Uh I don't think it's I don't okay. think it's got a name. The one but... that's still in the Stone Age? 
the, the civilization that's still in the Stone Age? I don't know. They're still in the Stone Age, but I guess since there's no real, real like buildings over there, I guess you would say. I mean, they're surviving. I mean, I think a part of like what history has kind of showed, at least showed me, is that so many places probably would have still been alive if it wasn't for like the infestation of like European diseases. Cause, like one of the one of the bigger problems is that you know the Europeans introduced things that you know people not living over there were not used to. So the body couldn't fight it. It's the Aborigines of Sentinel Island in the Andamans between Thailand and South India. They're still in, they still live in a Stone Age culture. They kill outsiders if they, if outsiders show up. Speaking of India, that was also around a country that I realized was Asian. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of my, I think I'm like, uh, I mean, if there's anybody in the world still watching the podcast, thank you for watching and making me making sensitive comments about countries that, that I'm, I mostly just like making comments if I didn't know this and I, I realized it later on. I apologize. I don't even think I've insulted Japan yet, other than maybe saying there's a bunch of islands, but like, <laughs> should, I, should I actually try to, no, don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, Japan might come after you. I mean, if they want, if anybody in the Japan watches this, is uh, no, I'm still here. Probably no. not. But I was pretty, I was pretty surprised by the South American ones. So, the, our viewer from Brazil, for example. I was thinking about that one viewer from Brazil <laughs> earlier to earlier this week, actually. <laughs> Like, like a part of me is like, man, it'd be it'd be hilarious if when we get a comment from that one guy, the guy finds a skin and it's just like, well, that person. I shouldn't assume gender. You're still talking about me. <laughs> you like on the podcast for twenty seconds. <laughs> it was the best twenty seconds of Jock's laugh, apparently. apparently he hasn't yeah. forgotten you. I hang on to that. Wrap my heart around it with hoops of steel. Jeez. But okay, um Yeah, I uh I guess backing up to what I started all this. Jock was right. We can move on. Apparently Utaro was smarter than I thought he was, even though I've seen his exact scenario before so many times. You know apparently they didn't want to go this route, even though Rooney Kitchen is a pretty old show. I'm actually kinda shocked. Um Okay, we did. Yutaro wakes up from being uh, accosted by his mentor, uh, really powerful sword strike. Um, pretty much, we uh, we come back to the episode starts off with um, we, we come back at the end of last episode. They're telling us that um, Yutaro will never be able to hold a sword again. We'll talk about that actual bit later on in the episode, which kind of gives me hope. Um. But yeah, he uh, apparently he um, he wakes up and he needs to fall into the ground. There's like two things because there was a sound. There was a sound he heard in another room. I had assumed that either Yutaro like got up and jumped out the window for his master, or he was on the floor. Uh, I what I guess ladder. Well, I guess the ladder was was correct. So he fell to the ground because he couldn't feel his arm, which was sad. Um, really sucked. I mean, Yaku was really upset. You know, Prince saying that like a guy who was really gifted at like sort a source play can never hold a sword again. Why does this always happen? Like, you, know, you can really feel Yaku felt like he lost something there when he heard you know he probably wouldn't be able to hold a sword again. Kind of yeah. felt bad for him and felt bad for um Yotaro there. That his entire situation kind of sucked. Away from him. Hmm? He had his dream kind of taken away from him. Okay, but I heard people. I hope people heard the beginning of everything we just said. I had to lower the music just in case. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just hope and pray that, that, that you know people could hear it. Um, I know our volume is boosted, but it was, at the, it was at the same level as the music. I had just lowered the music. Okay. But uh, yeah. After all that happened, like uh, apparently um. Uh, crap. Uh, what's what they call her? Kagome. Her name is Ka Akaru. 
it's a different anime I'm thinking about. Um, uh, Kairu pretty much rushes in the room, pretty much saying, "Is either is either her or um, is it Megumi? The name of the other girl? Megumi, yeah." Uh, rushes in the other room, saying that uh, Kenshin has walked off to meet um, Rajuta out in the forest again. And pretty much, oh. Yaiko grabs Yotaro, says, "You're gonna have to go face. Let's go and, uh, and you know face them together." Apparently, Yotaro had already lost all will to do anything. You could just see it in his eyes. Felt really bad for him. There, too, was like, "Geez, he, his entire like world view is just flipped on his head." Yahiko does a lot in this episode to keep like a fire under him. And Yotaro's. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that much later too. Like what he does at the end of the episode. But um, it starts right here. Do you know what I mean? He's like, "Come on, I'm gonna drag you out of here. Let's go." <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he, I think he, like he, he's found somebody that he can like, you know cross swords with per se yeah he has his respect but yeah they come we come back to where uh rajuta is and he's like he's impatient and angry that kitchen has come back in two hours i'm just saying like you cut it for two hours though is that kind of a, a diss from kenshin like a little insult to keep him waiting that long i interpreted that as he was two hours late because sanasuke is still there just chilling out no, I don't. I think what it is is that Rajuta is just really impatient, and like he, the battle stopped I, I the think moment. he, I think he, has, yeah, he had battle stay. I think he assumed that Kenshin was going to be right back immediately. Like he was going to carry yeah. him back. He was going to carry him back and come back immediately, but he didn't. Yeah. And he's okay, just so he's just upset that he got stood up. Poor him. He injures a person for life, and he has to wait two hours. <laughs> And then he threatens uh, Sonosuke, you know, but then, like, as he's about to get rid of the fight, the, the, apparently the trees blow, and they realize that that's uh, Kenshin in, in the wind, I guess. Literally. Uh, and he's like, well, you he, like, you, uh, you waited too long to to fight me, now you gotta deal with the main, the main headliner. Kenshin just walks in, and he's just like, he's just, he, you can tell Kenshin's mad. He's got that look in his eye. Again, this yeah, does a good job with the look in Kenshin's eye. Hmm? Sanosuke was about ready to fight him himself, which I don't think would have gone well for him. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder, is it possible that Sanosuke could, like, Sanosuke could beat him? I don't think so. Not even close. He seems pretty confident, but I don't think so. I don't think he can fight anybody that's, like, coming at him with a distance sword attack like that. I guess I don't. I don't know. I, I can't. I'm not gonna count him out. Maybe he can get a good I few licks. Count out completely, but like, what would he do? The guy's got a sword. Well, I mean, we see. You know, he could like. Sonosuke could take it. I mean, dang it, that's Sonosuke. He. Uh, I don't think he can take a sword blow. I think he could take like impact, but I don't think he could take like a cut. I don't know what he could have done. I mean, really, I mean, he probably could have done something. He probably has got, he's got tricks up his sleeve. He's a street fighter. He isn't like a, you know, traditionally trained fighter. Yeah, I'm sure he's like fought people with swords before. I just, this guy is pretty dangerous. I mean, yeah, well, a guy that literally spent 10 years learning a, t learning a technique from a scroll of ancient sword techniques. Yeah, the guy has talent. Um, <laughs> His skills are somewhere between Sanosuke and Kenshin. Kenshin's definitely stronger than him, but I don't think Sanosuke is anywhere near him. Anyway. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't have anything to argue that, but like, I don't know. Um, yeah, after, like, after all that, you know, Kenshin shows up and then they start their fight again. And pretty much, uh, Rajuta is like, "I'm gonna make you fight me seriously." Back in my mind, I was like, "Do you really want him to fight you seriously?" Like, because I mean, if you haven't really truly fought Kenshin, you could tell that Kenshin's got experience. But do you really want him to draw his sword against you? <laughs> Which is what I want to bring up to this entire fight. He didn't like Kenshin still didn't really draw his sword against him. He kind of just used the blunt end of his like of the hilt to to to, to finish him off. Like it didn't really do much of anything to really do any real lasting damage to him. Hmm? Two smacks in the face and a whap on the head is what took him out. 
I mean, guess no matter how big you are, I mean, your your head is kind of like a really sensitive spot. You get hit. And, uh, yeah, especially from Kenshin. But yeah, like uh, Rajuta keeps he throws sword slashes at him. Kenshin dodges a couple of near a near a near hits. Uh, Rajuta rejoices at this, and um, Kenshin is like, "Stop, uh, stop rejoicing at grazing me." Um, you can pretty much hear in Kenshin's voice that he's tired of dealing with him. Yeah. Even before like that, he's going for like three episodes now. Yeah, this is the third episode. Yeah, they've been going for three episodes. This is exhausting. Um, before he's like, Kitchen's like, stop. Like, like, I can tell you haven't killed anybody. I was like, and he was like, uh, it's like a person has killed somebody wouldn't be rejoicing at a graze because it didn't kill me. And he kept on like repeating, uttering this like this this entire fight that you've never killed anybody. I can tell in your, I can tell uh. By the way you act, I was like, Jesus. Engine's like done. He's like he's just like giving him like a lecture as he's beating his butt. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I, I like uh currently we learned that uh Virginia's trained enough to the point where he can like throw uh several Izunas uh, like back to back like that. And apparently it's part, it's part of his technique his sort of technique to like throw a couple of Izunas in and then go for the final attack to uh defeat his opponent um that doesn't do anything to kitchen either actually in fact i think kitchen takes a blow from it at some point too uh, even though it's apparently according to sonosuke uh yeah it looked like a direct hit and then he just like shrugs it apparently sonosuke, sonosuke says that apparently um that you look this bless the wind blast is apparently sharp enough to do um do cuts Apparently, also learned that like that's really what the Yuzuna is is, is like um him like, swinging his sword so quick that it creates a vacuum of wind pressure and he's able to throw that at people. Again, proof of like ancient sword techniques in this show. We we're getting we're getting a look at one. Uh, that must be meaning we're gonna be we'll get we'll get another ancient sword technique later on in the show at some point. Not sure when. So, yeah, Kitchen was able to like tell like okay. Oh, we also learn. Early on, too, the main reason why Kenshin like, had his arm in front of Yutaro was to, you know, the dull the blast that hit Yotaro. Because if it actually hit Yotaro full on, it would have cut his arm off, which is like oof. So I wonder, like, maybe he could have let him get his arm cut off. He could have got a cool prosthetic. You soon? Yeah. That would have been great walking around with like a hook for a hand. I mean, I mean, I, I think an actual like wooden arm with fingers. I don't What's think he needs point? to have. I don't think he needs to have a hook for an arm. What's the point of having a wooden arm like to drag around with you? It'd be on the stump of your arm, and as long as your nerves are working and can send signals, I feel like he could still use have a usable arm. I don't know if this world would be equipped for something like that. I don't think medicine's that far along here. I don't know. I mean, they make it sound like near the end of the episode, going to Europe was gonna like at least. Uh, Maybe they can have some look over in Europe. Well, they were like, we're going to go see the best doctors in the world. That makes but sense. No, he, but he followed that up with, but hopefully he can like get Yotaro's mind off of swordsmanship. Yeah, and become worldly and get his mind off swordsmanship. Doesn't sound like... I don't know, going to see the best doctors in the world makes a lot of sense. But it doesn't sound like they're exactly going to make him like a mechanical arm out of wood. I mean, it's not really a mechanical arm when it's made out of the wood. I'm just saying, like, there's there's a reason we have prosthetics that, like, that now like, they can function there's as an arm. We have prosthetics, yes, but in the 1800s, there's not a reason they had prosthetics. I mean, you never know. I mean, people say that geniuses are born ahead of their time. There's a possibility there's a genius in this time period that was born way ahead of his time. Yeah. I don't think so. I, mean, I know I'm reaching. I'm just saying, like, I mean, they, they make they kind of give me a hope with Guitar because, like, Guitar is still using his other arm and his reflexes are, like, still, like, good for a person who lost an arm. I mean, I know Yaiko swinging, swinging his bamboo sword wasn't, was, wasn't really trying to hit him. But at the same time, to me, Yaiko's quick. The fact that he was still able to block a bamboo sword from him is kind of proof that he might still be able to use his other arm to use swordsmanship. I don't think Guitar is completely out of the game. Will have a handicap for sure, but this is a this is an anime world. I mean, not everything is really realistic, you know. I'm pretty sure yeah. there are one-handed sword techniques that you can use. Just I don't think there's 
I don't think there's such a thing. I mean, like uh, fencing, I feel like fencing would be something that they would have in this world. Like, I mean, if he were to really think about it, maybe he could like try adapting fencing. It's really going to Europe. I'm pretty sure they can find, they can learn, he can learn fencing from somebody. Yeah, he could learn a one-handed fighting technique for sure. I'm not, I don't think that's anything that like is in doubt. I guess backing up in time real quick. Uh, pretty much after the, the continued fighting between um, Regida and Kenshin, Kenshin decides to end it. Uh, Regida comes in for his final strike. And uh, Kenshin like takes the takes the uh, takes the hit head on, and then reveals another technique. I forgot. Yeah, how the... did he take that hit head on? They don't explain how he did it. Did it. He just did it. Again, it might just be Kenshin. I mean, most of the time, muscle groups and things like that. I mean, if you're a fighter, you train your entire body, and that means every part of your body. People have unnatural control of their muscles. I'm almost pretty sure that's probably what it is. Either that. It looks like he was knocked like a little bit to the side by the blow, but that's like all we see. Like he he looks a little bit like knocked o- knocked away. A but again, bit. I mean, he did it earlier with like putting his arm in the way of that blow to dull it, so that at least Yataro still got to still got to keep his arm. Yeah, and that one he at least got injured though. He didn't take it. He didn't take it head on either. I don't think Kitchen's arm got injured at all. It just dulled it. No, he got a cut. Yutaro got cut. I don't think Kitchen did. Kitchen got cut. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll believe you. I'm just, I'm just saying I don't remember that. But okay. Um, he probably got maybe Kitchen got a got a cut somewhere and I just didn't see it. Again, Kenshin doesn't really, Kenshin doesn't really flinch at most small injuries. I mean, he he was doing that entire fight. He got small injury on his arm. He got small injury on his leg. I mean, even talking about that, maybe Kenshin, like I said before, I mean, people have unnatural control of their of their muscles anyway. I mean, some people are capable of flexing. By parts, I didn't think it was possible. So, like to me, it's like, eh, it's, it's probably realistically speaking. On top of that, Kenshin had already like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Shaken Rajuda um before this point anyway. I remember Rajuda wasn't really trying to like give him like a killing blow there, or if he was trying to, he wasn't doing a good job of it. Cause Kitchen already called him like a wimp saying that like, you're not you're not a killer. You know what? I wonder no, never mind. I was wondering since so much dust had kicked up if Kenshin had deflected it with the dust, but you don't it's the it's the attack that kicks up the dust, not Kenshin. I mean, anyway, Kenshin was another technique from his uh, Hiten Mitsurugi um, uh, belt. Again, it's another one of those defensive. It seems like it's mostly a more another defensive attack where he, he just he sends the uh, he 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 you know he uh, prepares himself. He jumps forward, tosses the sword out of his sheath, hits him in the forehead, grabs the sword, puts it back into his um his sheath, jumps up in the air. And then takes the sword in the sheath with the blunt edge and it jams into his forehead again, knocking him to the ground. And the kitchen just sits just like twitching. The kitchen just sits there on top of him, like just to make a point. Ha ha, but I'm <laughs> Oh my gosh. You didn't really just make that joke. Listen, you gotta stay sharp. But I'm t- I don't mean to be blunt, but that was not a good joke. Oh, how dare you? How dare you attack my <laughs> <laughs> my sharp wit? I can't use sharp again. Dang it! <laughs> That's all I had. I didn't have a. I didn't have an iron comeback. But I, I heard that joke and I was like, "Sheesh." You know what? We're gonna move on. This is getting too far. We probably <laughs> lost half the viewing audience already. Um, if we have any viewing audience, uh, the guy from Brazil is logging off as we speak. There was ever any merchandise that was spotted inside joke. I think that one right there. That one guy from Brazil. <laughs> just sell that as a t-shirt. Nobody will get it. <laughs> you just walk around with a t-shirt. Like, what's that one guy in Brazil? Well, if you know, you know. <laughs> People in the world would know the podcast. Like, oh, you watch that podcast too? Oh, you do too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. Uh, um, yeah, after the dust settles and Kenshin's made his point, uh, gets he gets off of him and then they all like uh, Kenshin I guess gives his like one last speech about like 
Like you, you're going around here talking about, uh, you know, a a uh, a kill a murderous sword. And in reality, you don't you don't have that. Like um, techniques don't make a murderous blade. I guess is the last thing he says to him. Meanwhile, he's on the floor. Yaiko goes over to try to congratulate him, and as we all expect, Rajuza grabs him by the leg, holds him upside down, and threatens to kill him. Yaiko, having iron balls, says, "Do it, man. <laughs> do it." Do it. And, and Sonosuke apparently like walks up behind, him, like, "He heard a kid. He said to kill him." And he's like, "Apparently, Rajuza cannot do it. Um, he's having a nervous breakdown." And let's go of Yaiko. Uh, and they That's all. Weird because I... I don't know. I thought they did show him kill somebody, but I guess not with the robbers, right? He didn't. He scared the robbers off more than anything. No, those robbers were like were people working for him. Yeah, but I mean that's right. So he didn't kill any of them. So we actually never did see him kill anyone. He uses killing force. He would have killed that guy in the dojo if, if he been allowed to. I don't know. I mean, based on the fact that he he even like he was going to kill him, and Kenshin stopped him. Yeah, but well, here's the thing, though. I mean, like Kenshin, I don't know. Kenshin believed he would have killed him there. Then why did he stop him? Maybe to make a point that like, you don't want to kill people. I think he was saving him. I don't know the way Kenshin like like talks about him and say like he's never killed anybody before. Maybe Kenshin believed that at the time he already killed somebody. And he, because I mean, he already he, by that point in the dojo, he he didn't know what type of person he was. He, he only had like he only he only had a, 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 a he only had what he was able to go off of like when he first fought him because he didn't even talk to him before. Or did he just show yeah. up at the dojo? Or did he just he show tries up? To kill, he tries to kill Kenshin. He attacked him with things that could be kill be deadly. So I don't know if he were to, could have killed that man in the dojo because he wasn't using an actual sword, he was using a bamboo stick, and those things aren't lethal. Until you can split the floor with it. Even still, bamboo swords, I don't think you can kill anybody with them. I think that's the reason why they use them in practice. Well, you can kill somebody with a bamboo sword, first of all. You just hit him in the head. And second of all, when he swung at Kenshin and he used a special technique using the bamboo sword, he split the floor open, like the dojo floor open. So yeah, if you can split a wooden floor open, you can hit somebody hard enough to kill them. I mean, regardless of all the evidence laid out before, I get, like my whole thing is like apparently Kenshin, like like I don't know, like I don't know what Kenshin knew, but Kenshin didn't know. Um, I'm not totally sure if he was capable of killing because I mean he loses his nerve near the end of the dang episode ends up crying in front of a prayer statue after an old woman and, and, and a, a kid walk off um, realizing that he can't kill anybody um, no he beheaded the statue but not the people that wasn't that wasn't killing anybody though yeah he just hey, kinda... you saw the after credit scene this time yeah I did I um, actually almost didn't it wasn't until I realized that there was still a few more minutes that it wasn't present before. I was like, oh, wait. I have expected them to, like, show him about to swing at them, at them and then cut away with the birds and never show us what happened. <laughs> yeah. I have expected them to do it. Because that would have meant that he's going to come back. Um, I don't know if he's going to come back, though. I mean, I don't know why he would. He's, he's, he's had his will broken. Uh... Yeah, apparently, at least according to Kitchen's like whole idea of how he was, you know, sizing him up, he's never killed anybody. Um, I find it kind of interesting that you know somebody who's like he says that you know people who kill people don't like they don't they don't they don't rejoice about it. Maybe like, that's about the time that he figured him out. It's when he saw his behavior about being scratched. Yeah, I know, man. That's what I talked about earlier. It's like you know he said you know somebody who doesn't you know people who kill people don't. Rejoice at a graze. And he kept on saying that this through the entire fight or back and forth, whatever it was, that you know, stop stop being happy about grazing me. Yeah. So that's probably the time the point where he started realizing what this guy was really made out of. 
After all that's taken care of, her is on the ground. You know, on, well, that's on the ground at this point. He's like standing up, you know, paralyzed with fear. At the kitchen, like gives him like the death glance. So it's like, 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 like I wouldn't do that if I were you. It's like a situation where, like, you know, like if you meet somebody, you better be very glad you met me because you met an actual murderer. You, you'd be dead. I was like, mm. spoken like a true man. It's like, I wonder if Rajuda could tell that Kitchens killed somebody. Just by looking at him. Kitchens just looked at him and called him a, like, bush league. <laughs> <laughs> you see this sword? Mm -hmm. I've killed several thousand people with this thing. Several thousand. Several thousand. Is that of a period or several thousand? <laughs> I killed so many people with my sword that I had to get a backwards one. He's... <laughs> Yeah, Kenji. Also, speed of which, like, I think during the entire encounter, like, did, like, did, did, did Izazuna cut the, uh, the thing holding up uh, Kenji's ponytail? Is that what cut it? His, his hair was down after that, after that encounter. He didn't have, his hair was not up. I didn't even notice that little detail. How did you not notice it to be his hair is long? You can see it when the, um, you can see the moment that it comes up. It's right around nine minutes. Yeah, it's the blast that cuts his ponytail. The thing holding his ponytail off. Okay. I was wondering. Like, no, I saw. I saw it happen, but I wasn't. I wasn't able to comprehend it. I was like, I saw it happen. Not, it falls off when he's rushing at him with the scabbard. So it probably cut it, and then his move forward movement knocked it off. I moved so fast that it came off, but then again, there's no precedent for that actually happening. So I'm going to take the, it, so it was fast, cut, so it was cut and he just moved fast and just, it came off. Yeah. I'm going to take that as, you know, it got cut and then he just like moved forward. Okay. But, um, after all that's taken care of, you know, Regina's will has been totally broken. He's a baby. Uh, uh, like, he's reliving yeah. all his past, mo his past moments where it all went wrong. And then Kenshin and everybody, oh, you know, walk off. Huh? He has so many regrets in his life at this point. <laughs> How could this happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, everybody walks off. Yeah, he was like, you know, telling you, um, to, uh, he's telling you, Taro, like, come on, like, let's, let's, let's go back home. And, you know, like, Taro just turns around and, and, and says his final farewell to his old mentor. And they all walk off. Sir. Yeah, he still kind of gives that little bit of respect. Yeah, he does. He doesn't really need, um, or deserve. But yep, the uh, they yeah, all go. Least of all from him. Hmm? Least of all from Yutaro. He didn't deserve that from Yutaro. Least of all. That's true. Uh, they all go back home, and then like I guess a couple a day passes to come back to check on Yutaro, and the, his father says that he's been held up in his room um, ever since that day. Which I mean is understandable. I mean, he had his entire world like completely turned upside down. He lost the use of an arm. His master wasn't really a good guy, or it wasn't he wasn't living up to the, the the image that he had in his head. Um, apparently, uh, Kairu had leaves something leaves a gift for him at, at the at the door with the butler, and said so they're gonna come back later. See if they can talk to him. And we come back to Kenshin talking to the father and we learn a little bit more about what happened. And it's like his father at some point, you know, he wasn't going to be a, sword, a samurai anymore, but he needed something. So apparently he apparently was gifted at appraising swords, which is something I never heard of a samurai being able to do. But I guess makes well, a samurai sense. Would, a samurai would know what a good sword looks like and how much they cost and everything else. So. I just never heard of a samurai. I mean, I get, like I said, I guess I'll before. It makes sense, but it's just something like it's not common to have those types of like. I mean, those kind of connections. I would, I would, I would think. Uh, apparently, it's. I mean, he made he made use of it. And he was able to make a lot of money. Apparently, it sounded like he wasn't really trying to do this like as a way to make money. It just so happened the people that he did this for were really generous and really gracious that he was capable of it. Um, so it turned into a business for him to be able to support his family. It kind of sounded like it all just happened really quickly. He wasn't, he didn't make any real decisions about anything. It just, it just so happened that it happened this way. 
um apparently he knew about his son's whole disposition about it all and you know he, he, you know he knew his son wanted to apparently uh upend him show him up or whatever uh then we probably learn that they're going to europe and uh to search out like some of the best medical you know physicians out there to see if they can't like I guess try to try to fix his arm or at least make it more manageable. Um, but yeah, Yaiko hears this and like we we see from here to the end of the episode, Yaiko trying to come up with something to say. He like as they're walking away from the house, he looks back at the at the window. I was half expecting Yotaro to be looking out the window and then completely disappear after seeing Yaiko looking back at him, but they didn't do that. Um, yeah, and we see Yotaro in his room sulking. And as he as he probably would be, I mean, he, again, he's had his world up on it. So, um, but apparently, because he said they're going to disappear after a week to Europe, a week passes and we see him at the train station, and um, like you know, the Kenshin and the gang all um wish them you know good luck. Nobody has he anything. Still won't speak to him. He hmm? like lowers his head and hides his eyes and his hair, and he won't he won't speak back to them. Yeah, they, I mean, they all don't know what you say. You know, they're like, Kairo's like, trying to figure out something to say. So as Gary realizes that even, you know, uh, go out there, like, you know, do good or he whatever looks, isn't going to work. Got, you know, he's got that cane all of a sudden and he's acting feeble. I don't know if he's acting feeble. He's just, I know he's just, he's broken. Like, his spirit. Walking with a, walking with a cane is, is feeble looking when we already know that you can run around and stuff like that to go see the tensions battle you're right his spirit is broken more than his body well, his body his arm is screwed up but like the rest of his body is fine but his spirit is broken so it's not working so well yeah as he turn around to go enter the train uh you know yahiko has a thought and he rushes right he yells his name and rushes at him and swings the bamboo sword at him and he raises the cane to block and i will say i was actually kind of impressed at his reflexes i was like geez that's kind of quick considering that the cane was like on the ground right as he rushed at him like be, to me that that was a good display of like he's still capable of blocking he, his other arm is still good so like it's like that kind of gives me hope that okay this this maybe he'll come back and maybe we'll see that he's like still able to he'll probably have a handicap for the rest of his life but i mean like he sh maybe he'll still be able to be of a good like a, a good arrival for yahiko first yahiko and him spar a little bit saying like you better come back like to finish what we started you know yotaro does the typical thing is like i'm like you just come at me and swing about any uh about any morning and then they uh they, they swing at swing at our feet for a few minutes and then you see yotaro and um his father on the train his father like, like tells him like those are some good people aren't they and they then yotaro is still like upset that yahoo came at him at full force about like without any uh with reckless abandon without any consideration for his his arm and then you seeing you see him smiling because he's like he's glad that he met him and that like, he's gonna come back and he's gonna he's gonna come back and defeat him is what he says Yaku's like watching the train go off and it's like that's a cool ending you know for that character they didn't really need to give could have just send him off and we'd never think we see him again but um i don't know we'll see him again but i mean it's kind of cool if we do mm -hmm. for sure that was like a cool ending to everything you know he still he had hope he had his spirit revitalized he's a yaiko i wouldn't mind seeing old cat eyes come back and then kenshin's like as they're about to head off to do because they're in another city and then Lenosuke, you know, says like, well, we go and do some Western cuisine out here. And they're about to walk off and then Kyra sees that Kenshin is like a little bit depressed. And we find out that he's still thinking about Rajuta. He brings up that Rajuta is actually gifted. It's just that he was misguided because he was just learning sword techniques versus like learning how to, you know, swing a sword properly and stuff like that. He could have been a good uh, swords, uh, swordsman if he had like uh, focused on that versus focusing on um, the state of sword, uh, the state of samurai. I thought that was interesting too. It was like, okay, like Kenshin said that he's like, he's not, he's not like, he's not weak. He's just that he, he, he was like, he was like misguided. Um, after that, uh, Kenshin brings up the, you know, the, the dojo master, I forgot his name. The, the one who nearly got killed. 
it's like he was he was like depressed at the state of um state of samurai or the use of the sword way of the sword or whatever basically he looks like yeah kind of tired right? he he has no worries which is really cool that you know he sees the future in those two which is also a nice little like tip of the hat to like okay they, they they brought up this this uh this problem and it seems like they kind of solved it in the future and not right now yeah which is also nice and then the and then the outro plays and then we come back to a still broken spirit rajuta um claiming like, he's gonna I'm kill these somebody, old he's gonna kill this old woman that. huh what this old woman and this little girl i've got to kill them so he can be a badass <laughs> Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't laugh, but that's kind of what kind of what this kind of you know kind of came down to. I'm not even gonna kill him head on. I'm gonna like come at them from behind. <laughs> he uh, he brings the sword up, and he's still thinking about Kitchen said about murderous sword, and like we cut away to the pro. He swings, and the birds and the trees all move. We come back. And we see that apparently he cut the head off the Buddha statue, whatever that statue was, um, and it rolls on the ground. And the old lady's like, "Huh, what is this?" She puts it back onto the, to the statue, and then prays again, and it walks off. And meanwhile, we see Rajuda walk up to the statue, falls to his knees, and starts crying. He's completely done. <laughs> Error reading drive Rajuda. <laughs> Where Rajuda not found. Rajuda.exe is not working. Please turn them off and turn them back on again. <laughs> the Rajuda screen of death. Oh no. Jeez. But yeah, that's how the episode ends. Um, the episode ends with Yahiko and Yutaro pegs on the, on the board. You see Karu's peg for the, for the teacher, one for students, and then Yahiko is the first student, and Yutaro is the second one that says reserved, parentheses. But I thought it was really nice that they did that. I was like, they reserved that second spot for him. I was like, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, she definitely did say that, you know, she'll wait for him, and she'll reserve that second seat specifically for him. <clears throat> so, um, it's really nice that they did all that, you know, like, they didn't have to do all that, but they did anyway. Yeah. And there's no cliffhanger for this one. Yeah, um, how many episodes left do we have of this show? I don't know. Because of this season, I should be saying, but. It's 24 episodes, so we have six more. Okay, that's six weeks. That's that's not bad. Wait, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Nine episodes. I'm completely wrong. Nine, nine weeks. Episodes ago. One week, two weeks. Two months. Three week. Two months, eh? I think we're on the cusp of my hero coming back. Yeah, I think so we're, on, I think we're, on, we're on the cusp of that. But when this, when this, I think we'll be done with this by the time that show starts back up. And who knows, maybe Dragon Prince will show back up again, too. I have no idea. We'll see. Something will come up. But yeah, um, uh, good, a uh, good small arc. Didn't take too long. I mean, you can judge three episodes taking too long. I don't really know. I mean, everything, everything flowed. There was no unnecessary, um, prolonging what was happening. Rachuta was just a means to an end. Um, we, we got just to enjoy another young character, same age as Yaiko. Um, we saw... I'm not seeing the Trigun feel because it's the episodes are not in becoming more intense with each one. They're more like, this was almost like Slice of, Lo Slice of Life with a Bad Guy kind of episode. I think it was like I mean they're I think they're trying to build up on like each character uh, one episode at a time and then we'll jump into the next bit. I mean so far as the dragon comparison, I only really it's only really with the Kenshin character kind of. Um, they haven't really gotten to the dichotomy of Kenshin yet. Um, and his whole turmoil, we only got a little piece of it. Um, and things hinted at throughout like 
for instance, like Kenshin's whole sword style, it, it's not only does this seem unique, period, Kenshin doesn't want to teach it to anybody. And um So far no one has been able to other than like I think it's Ayoshi. Even then I don't think he was able to really clash with it. So, you know. There's that, like Kenshin's sword style is very unique. Um seems to really rely on his ability to be quick. I know the bat that Beto Sai Jutsu is like being able to bring the sword out quickly and then bring it back in. Something that apparently the, sp the speed that he's doing it isn't really possible. So, you know. But it doesn't, I don't get that overall feeling, that tragic feeling of of the uh, of Trigon. Like, there's nothing really tragic about Kenshin right now. He has a bad past and everything, we know that. But it Oh, there's some tragedy, all right. There is some tragedy. Sorry, as I'm speaking directly into the mic, this is probably hurting your ears right now. <laughs> it's all right. Without spoiling anything, oh, there is some tragedy. Tragedy. Unfortunately, I don't know every single bit because I know there's a bit of an arc that never got animated that greatly upsets me to this day. I'm no longer speaking directly to the microphone. Um, that was nice. I'm so glad you did that. Are you? Are you really glad no. I did that? <laughs> no. Ask me again. Are you glad I'm doing this right now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, they already got like the second season or subtitling it, subtitling it, the Kyoto Disturbance. Whatever that means. Um. I know what it means, but not gonna say any more than that. Uh, you know, I'd love to know if they got a release date for that, but I'm pretty sure they haven't started animating it yet, so they probably don't have a release date for it. Yep. Yep. Oh, they don't have a release date. For it. Okay. It's really weird they're confirming that they're releasing it this year, but there's no date for it yet. I Meanwhile, well, I got like my hair got damaged showing up at, in May. Which is still like an odd month. It's like, I'm wondering, like, does that mean we're going to have my hair, like, running through the rest of this year into 2025? Yeah, 2025. Could be. Because we usually start, like, we usually start in March. Well, we usually end in March. We usually start in, like, October. Yeah. You just start in October and it ends in March. October. October, November, December, January, February, March. It's five months. So we were to. Oh, speaking of that, um, I, I'm not sure how true this is. Apparently, the animator knows how this series is going to end. And they're not the person making the, you know, making the, the original, the original content. You know, the actual like, uh, comic book maker. So I don't know, maybe the guy must have shared the information with them at some point. Um, that's kind of ominous. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, it's been a lot of stuff. That's, that's uh, what's happening currently in the manga, floating on the internet. Um, for people who don't want to be spoiled, I, I, I wish you the best of luck. Because <laughs> Google will hate you if it knows you watch it. Uh... But yeah, a probably animator, the one making the anime, knows how this is going to end. I'm very intrigued by information. Uh, I'm also envious. <laughs> yeah, like, I know the manga pretty knows how it ends because that's his story, but I did not know that the animator knew. Um, I sure that doesn't mean that it's going gonna, gonna to slip how it's going to end at some point because like, I kind of would hope not. But, um, we are at 10.40 now. I guess this will end it here, folks. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, for that one guy or woman in Brazil. Hail, Brazil. Thank you guys for watching. I see the views on the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and we'll continue this for as long as humanly possible. Indeed. See you guys then. See you next time.